I uh, just had had enough. There was a situation that happened in uh, in Germany about full salaries and stuff. And in those days, thought it was better to play with a lot of different people. Nowadays, I would have probably stayed with Buddy Rich, although I had a lot of great, great, great experiences that I would never have gotten. So anyway, I'm on my way back home, finally deciding to quit. And the, the job ends, and my friend Bill Jamsa, who I played, was from Westminster, I played with him for many, many years. Uh, he called me up and he said, he said, well, now that you've played, he was commenting on my performance at Lenny's on the Turnpike, which he had come to see, and was very uh, chagrined to hear that I had given my notice. So he says, what are you going to do now? And I said, I don't know. I said, uh, I, I have a chance of, to go on Woody Herman's band that might come through, which it did. And he says, well, how's it going to be? You've played with the best. What are you going to do now? I said, uh, I'm just going to keep on with my career. The next day he called me and said, did you see the latest Downbeat magazine? And I said, no. At the time, I was cons I was voted the, the 11th best jazz trombone player in the world. If I had stayed on Buddy's band, I would have been able to exploit that. But among the bright solo stars, Alto man, Richie Cole, and trombonist Rick Stockton. Now I ask you, trombone, number one, J.J. Johnson, number 11, Rick Stockton. I actually got 102 votes. I went on to Woody's band the next year and I came in 56th. <laughs> I went up to him on the Holiday Inn and knocked on the door and said, Woody, I'd just like to tell you, I had a great... Uh, Great time playing with you. I'm leaving tonight, and uh, he had a beer in his hand. He just slammed the door in my face. John S. Wilson, he was the jazz critic for the New York Times. On this disc, Buddy is less the flashy star than the stimulator and motivator. His solos, relatively brief, are only part of a set that has excellent arrangements by Don Pystrip, Roger Newman, and Bill Holman, and a strong lineup of soloists, notably Richie Cole on alto saxophone, George Zonis on trumpet, and particularly... Rick Stepton on trombone. Stepton ranges from a dark, very funky attack that could be a cross between Bill Harris and Jack Teagarden and a soaring, slippery virtuosity that is reminiscent of some of Phil Wilson's work with Woody Herman. Stepton has a fascinating array of colors and accents, and fortunately he gets a chance on everybody's talking to show off a good share of them. Holy shit, huh? March 1971. Of course, I had already shot myself in the foot and gone somewhere else. What an asshole. I always have dogs. I started adopting dogs in 1977. I always had a couple of cats and a dog around. I have my dog, Kelly, the first dog I ever got. I had her up in Toronto with me. I did a one-nighter, and Buddy Rich came up to me and says, What are you doing in Canada? Why don't you come back on my band? I said, I can't, buddy. I got a dog. Said, what do you mean you got a dog? I said, I got a dog. He says, you'd rather have a dog than be on my band? I said, hey. he says, I got to meet that fucking dog. <laughs> so in 1992, I, I met the, the uh, woman who was to become my second wife after a 25-year lapse. Well, this uh, job here in Worcester is my uh, <clears throat> third CD release party, and this uh, CD is called Stiff Upper Lip, and uh, it was recorded uh, in November. I had moved to New York uh, in September, and I came back to do it, and uh, we're just here celebrating the release of it. The reason I chose Stiff Upper Lip for the title is uh, dedication to the plastic surgeon that uh, sewed up my lip after this uh, unfortunate accident I had with a dog biting, uh, virtually severing my upper lip, a large chunk of it. So I dedicated this song to him. 
I basically uh, bent down to pat a dog uh, uh, that was a neighbor's dog, and it uh, jumped up and seemed to seemed to grab my upper lip uh, with, with just one tooth or something, but it ripped it off. And it fell down so that I I was able to see it peripherally, and I actually caught it, and then I put it back. This was in December of '92. And we, I was rushed to the emergency ward, and <clears throat> my uh, wife kept on saying, uh, we just can't have anybody sew him up because he's a trombone player and he needs it to be sewn up exactly the way it is, it was before he got bit. Basically, he used hundreds of stitches to sew, sew it back together again with all, using microsurgery, uh, getting all the blood vessels back, and he then had to see whether or not it would uh, it adhere and whether or not it would, it would function, whether blood would flow. And he said if it didn't, he was going to have to put leeches on it like they used to do in the old days. I basically went to his office and I could play a few notes. It was really excruciatingly painful. And I just did one note at a time for maybe three months. And I started playing again. And I just took it easy. I, I wouldn't play lead trombone. I would play section parts. I wouldn't take long solos. I, would, I just basically played it pretty cautious for for about a year, and, uh, but there is scar tissue and it is numb and it doesn't buzz, which is part of the way you make a sound. Uh, but I, I just have learned how to, uh, I, I relearned how to play the trombone so that I could accommodate that by letting my body tell me what it needed to do to reproduce the sound that I needed to hear. And I just did chromatic scales, long, agonizing long tones for months and months at a time. Bob Galati on the drums, Bronick Suhanik on bass, John Wilkins on guitar. I'm Rick Stepton, and that was a song uh, that I entitled Stiff Upper Lip, dedicated to the plastic surgeon that took care of me a few years back uh, when I had an unfortunate accident with a dog. It is also the title of our newest CD, which is why we're here celebrating our third CD. Technique uh, called multiphonics. The overtone series have certain partials, like vibrations. Mm -hmm. This multiphonics is, a, is a, a, a thing where you can play the root of a chord, which is the first degree of a scale, say, say the F, F scale. You sing the, uh, you play the F on your instrument, you sing the fifth higher, which is the C. Mm -hmm. F, G, A, B flat, C. For those with perfect pitch, I was probably off, but I'm not even close. And the third comes out in the overtone series through some miracle. So if you play the first degree, and sing the fifth degree, the third of the chord comes out automatically. So you're playing singing, and this comes out, so all three sound, and it goes something like this. Well, you're singing through your throat, so you, your, the, your throat is open, so you got to keep it in the same position. See, I'm singing that note. Blues for the bone, and it ends like. Just as a, there's a German trombone player named Albert Mangelsdorf that perfected this to an art, and he does a little thing where he plays a rhythmic thing and then improvises on top of it. He goes. You know, and he, oh, yeah, he right. 
accompanies himself. If you want to learn how to tongue, your tongue has to do that in the mouthpiece, just like a, just like I did it, like this. Da 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 da. Case closed. Do it. Somebody says, "How do you be yourself? Who else can you be? Do you know what it means to be yourself? Well, you should. You're the only one that's you." If anybody wants to come to the stage and dance, feel free to do so. You're invited, you know, this is your party, and thanks for the invitation. I want to thank uh, David and Colette. The time has come, the walrus said, to speak of many things, of sealing wax and jazz with Mark Marquis. Ooh. Wallace Civic Center, June 23rd, 1970. County Talent. On the bandstand next Tuesday, when the fabled drummer Buddy Rich and his big band blasts Wallace Civic Center or Wallace Center, Rick Stepton, the top drawer trombonist from Lunenburg, occupies lead chair. Well, in June of 1970, a couple of friends of mine, Dick Boudreau and Lloyd LeBlanc Sr., and myself uh, booked the Buddy Rich Band into the Wallace Civic Center, which was brand new. It had just opened about five or six months earlier. And uh, we thought, number one, the Rich Band being popular, Buddy had made several appearances on uh, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Added to that, the fact that uh, Fitchburg's own Rick Stepton was uh, playing lead trombone in the band. Uh, we thought this was just going to be a, a great event. So the day of the event, which was June 23rd, uh, the three of us, uh, Dick and Lloyd and myself, were at the Civic Center all day getting ready for the event. At about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, somebody said, they're here. So we went out front, and sure enough, a bus had pulled up in front of the Civic Center. The entire Buddy Rich band uh, came out of the bus, except Buddy. Where's Buddy? He's coming on his own. He's driving his own car. Okay. Well, a couple hours passed. We were getting a little antsy, but all of a sudden somebody said, he's here. He's parked out in back. So I went outside to the back of the Civic Center. I had been designated as sort of the MC of the evening. Uh, and sure enough, packed out, uh, parked out back was Buddy, uh, standing next to his car, which was this beautiful Jaguar XKE, as I remember. And he's standing next to it on the passenger side, just uh, outside the door. And he's got his elbow on the roof of the car. He's got a cigarette in the other hand, I believe. And, and he's just kind of looking around. So I went up to him and I, I, I said, hi, buddy. Uh, my name is Dave Svens, and I'll be introducing the band tonight. I don't even remember if he acknowledged <laughs> what I had said. But anyway, I'm trying to make a little small talk. So I says, well, buddy. Where, where are you going from here? Still with the elbow on the top of the car, still with the cigarette, and he starts looking around. And the only time he made eye contact with me, he looks at me and he says, where the fuck am I? That's Buddy. <laughs> 